Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, thanks so much for your testimony today. General Milley, I want to begin with you, and I want to build on a question that Ranking M Member Rogers asked. Uh, on August 18th, President Biden said that there's no way possible that U.S. troops could be withdrawn from Afghanistan without the chaos that we saw unfold. In your best military judgment, was there a way to extract the troops without the chaos that we saw unfold? I just want to be clear, we're talking two different missions. Uh, the retrograde of the troops, the 2,500 everybody's talking about, those are advisors. That was complete by mid-July, and that was done actually without any significant incident, and that's the handover of 11 bases, the bringing out of a lot of equipment, et cetera. That was done under the command of General Miller. The non-combatant evacuation operation is different. Non-combatant operation, that was done under conditions of great volatility, great violence, great threat, and we inserted 6,000 troops on relatively short notice because there were some contingency plans to do that. That's a different operation, uh, and I think that the first two days of that, as we saw, were not only chaotic but violent and high risk, uh, but because of the skill and leadership of our troops, they were able to get control of a situation in an airfield in a country that was falling apart uh, and then execute the operation. So um, I think it would have been difficult under any circumstances, and I think our soldiers performed extraordinarily well, actually, in 48 hours getting control of an airfield in, a, in another country eight and a half time zones away. But I understand that, but you're talking about a very compressed time frame. I'm talking about the, the full extent about what you're looking at. You can talk about two missions, but I'm talking about in totality of what we're looking at there was a chaotic and disaggregated effort. It seems like to me that uh, your professional military judgment would probably not have been focused uh, in your recommendations and seeing this outcome. I just wanted to get, get from your My recommendations uh, at the time and my analysis at the time uh, were aligned actually with what you've heard from uh, General Miller previously and General McKenzie was flatline at about 2,500 uh, and go for a negotiated solution and make sure it's conditions based. Um, and we all render our advice and presidents make decisions and then we execute. This morning, you stated that uh, the withdrawal was a logistical success, but a strategic failure. And I would say that probably American citizens and the special immigrant visa holders would probably disagree. Those that were left behind would probably disagree with your assessment of a logistical success. That being said, I want to focus on the strategic failure aspect of that. You said yesterday that all you can do, and you just said it now, all you can do is provide your best advice, and it's up to the president to make the ultimate decision. In your best military judgment, did President Biden's decisions cause this strategic failure? I think, as I said yesterday, first of all, I'm not going to judge a president. That's the job of the American people. That's the job of Congress, not my job. I'm asking for your best military uh, judgment, for, yeah, for so your I, judgment. My, my assessment is this is a 20-year war, and it wasn't lost in the last you know, 20 days or even 20 months, for that matter. There's a cumulative effect to a series of strategic decisions that go way back, you know, bin Laden, right on the Torah Bora, for example. We knew where he was, we were a thousand meters away, could have ended it perhaps right there. The shift from uh, going into Iraq and, and, and pulling all the troops out of uh, Afghanistan, with the exception of a few others, major strategic decision. Not effectively dealing with Pakistan as a sanctuary, major strategic issue that we're going to have to really unpack. The intelligence piece, pulling advisors off three or four years ago out of Candex, so we blinded ourselves to our ability to see the will, the morale, the leadership, and the training. There's a whole series of decisions that take place over 20 years. Uh, I don't think that whenever you get some phenomena like a war that is lost, and it has been in the sense of we accomplished our strategic task of protecting America against Al Qaeda, but certainly the end state is a whole lot different than what we wanted. So whenever that, a phenomena like that happens, there's an awful lot of causal factors, and we're going to have to figure that out. A lot of lessons learned here. Thank you. And I, I want to build uh, with your answers to Secretary Austin. Secretary Austin, I um, imagine that you had a number of opportunities in your capacity as CENTCOM Commanding General uh, to brief President Obama. And I imagine that Vice President Biden was probably privy to these briefs. Was he a regular attendee when you gave these briefs? Uh, the Vice President was frequently uh, in, uh, in the situation room when we had when we conducted meetings, yes. Gotcha. Let me go from there then to the Battle of Kunduz, which we know Taliban took over, Afghan forces retreated. Uh, did you recognize that as the beginning of the weakness in the ISAF mission? And were there issues at that point of intense interest to Vice President Biden? 
I'm sorry, that's going to have to be a question for the record because the time has expired. Ms. Spear was recognized.